To all who come to this place, welcome. So you may have noticed a little bit of a difference in the intro to this video, and that's because this isn't really going to be a super happy video. Uh, it's going to be fun. We're still going to make it fun. It's more of a uh, sit down and let's talk and let's be serious for a second kind of video. And today I'm going to be talking about something that I think I would consider a problem that I've been seeing that's really pervasive in the Disney parks or Disney fandom or people who are fans of the Disney parks or Disney or the Disney movies as of recently. And I know this is just me like getting up on my soapbox and just telling everybody that they're wrong and stupid. I'm gonna try and stay away from that kind of stuff. I'm mostly trying to just talk to the people who, you know, are these fans who are upset about everything that Disney's announcing. And I just wanted to talk to them and just to see if we can kind of change their perspective a little bit on some things. Uh, if not, that's okay. Uh, if you don't like this kind of video, feel free to skip to the end. I have something at the end for everybody. It's gonna be really cool and it has to do with the Haunted Mansion. So skip to the end of the video. I'll put a timestamp right here if you don't care about all the stuff that I have to say. So with D23 taking place recently, uh, I was watching live streams of the park panels so I could see what was happening and what was going on. Uh, what they were announcing in real time. Uh, I try to do that every year. Uh, I streamed it a little bit this year, but I was mostly focusing on the chat to the right side of the video. And I know I shouldn't focus on the chat or read the comments, but I just wanted to see what people were thinking about and how they were reacting to these new announcements made by Disney. And there were lots of people praising the parks, but for every one person I saw, you know, happy about these changes, I saw five, 10 people who were angry and upset and not even with valid complaints, just complaining about IP caught. And that's the first thing that we're going to talk about today. I see people complaining about characters being added into the World Showcase or into Epcot and people saying that this isn't the original, you know, idea for Epcot, not the original vision. Walt wouldn't have wanted this. Walt didn't like intellectual properties in the parks. But what they fail to realize is that intellectual properties have been a crucial part of the park since the opening day of Disneyland. Disneyland opened with the oversight of Walt and included rides like the Casey Jr. Circus Train, Storybook Land Canal Boats, Alice in Wonderland, Snow White's uh, Scary Adventures, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. There's a lot in Fantasyland, but also some in Frontierland too, like the Davy Crockett Explorer Canoes. A lot of it Frontierland was based around Davy Crockett because it was such a big TV show back in those days, and those are all Disney intellectual properties. And when I see these people complaining about intellectual properties at Epcot, it kind of confuses me because Epcot is the most intellectual property free Disney park, I think maybe in the whole world, uh, minus maybe Animal Kingdom or Tokyo Disney Sea, because they have rides like Mission Space, Spaceship Earth, Living with the Land, Soarin'. These are all non-IP attractions. Even the Circle Vision films and the films in the World Showcase are not tied to any Disney intellectual property at all. And so adding these intellectual property based uh, rides, it brings a whole lot more people in than would go on these non-intellectual property based rides. Maelstrom instead of Frozen, Ratatouille in Paris. These rides are extremely popular with guests and they're really good rides. It's They're not bad rides just because they're based on a pre-existing franchise or movie. They're good rides because Imagineering knows what they're doing, and I don't think a lot of people think that's the case, uh, especially when it comes to Epcot. And I'm not here saying that their fears are unfounded in any way, because I think uh, Disney not mentioning Figment, obviously that can be a little disconcerting to some people uh, during the D23 presentation, but everything that they showed for Epcot I think looks really good so far. The Moana Journey of Water walkthrough attraction is very similar to what I think Walt would have wanted for Epcot. Not everything has to be this massive e-ticket with physical sets like Rise of the Resistance or Pirates of the Caribbean. Walt wanted Pirates of the Caribbean to be a wax museum. He wanted the Haunted Mansion to be a walkthrough experience. Disney knows what they're doing, and I don't think a lot of people think that's the case, like I said. And I think one thing everybody needs to keep in mind is that Disney's not making these choices willy-nilly. They're not replacing Universe of Energy with uh, Cosmic Rewind just because they want to, or just because their shareholders want them to. They know that Ellen's Energy Adventure wasn't bringing in as many people as, say, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout over in California. So these intellectual properties coming into Epcot, 
I think are not only crucial for the park's uh, modernization, but I think also the fears about it changing the park for the worse are way overblown. Uh, that's not to say there aren't problems with the Disney parks, and we'll talk about that because some people have these very founded ideas of what's going wrong, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But I want to talk first about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the opening of this fantastic land, and what happened with the Disney fans during that time, because it's a very weird time to be a Disney Parks fan right now. So with the release of Star Wars The Force Awakens, Rogue One, The Last Jedi, and Solo, the Star Wars community has been very split, very fractured about whether or not these movies are good movies, whether or not they like them or if they're good Star Wars movies. And that's a different debate for a different time, but the Star Wars community is known right now, unfortunately, to be a very toxic community. The whole Kelly Marie Tran situation where people bullied her to such an extent that she had to go dark from social media, uh, that was just a horrible, horrible situation. And all the people involved in that should really be ashamed of themselves. And it just kind of shows that right now, the Star Wars community isn't the best community to be a fan of. It's really, it's a dark place. Uh, that's not to say that everyone there uh, is a bad fan. Obviously, every fandom has its bad eggs. And unfortunately, we've kind of seen that carry over to the parks with the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. You see, when the land opened at Disneyland, they were using a uh, reservation system, and most of the annual passes were blocked out uh, during that time because they knew that crowds were going to be so large because Disneyland is a very local park, and lots of the local uh, annual pass holders were going to be coming in on opening day and it would have been a whole disaster. So Disney used this reservation system, if you didn't know, and it really helped alleviate those opening day crowds. On opening day, you could find a line for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run under 30 minutes towards the end of the reservation period because everybody was going through the land and they only let a certain amount of people in. And then when the reservation period was over, uh, they had these things called boarding groups and they never really had to utilize these boarding groups. Uh, because, like I said, most of these passes were blocked out, and so lots of the people who usually go to Disneyland weren't able to make it in, and so crowds were extremely light, and lots of people, Disney fans, Star Wars fans, were calling the land a failure for being uh, very light on crowds. And if Disney measured the success of a land based on how big the crowd sizes were, but Galaxy's Edge was really hopping, and it still is today, because it's so immersive and it's one of the best lands Disney has ever built. Again, another video for another time. But in reality, it really bothered me seeing people calling Galaxy's Edge a failure because of the crowd size. If crowd size was a measure of success, Hagrid's Magical Motorbike Adventure in Universal would have been a smash hit because that line was upwards of, what, 12, 16 hours on opening day because the ride kept breaking down. So I think Disney is in the right here. I think Galaxy's Edge was a huge success, but that's not to say, again, people who have criticisms of Galaxy's Edge, uh, there were cutbacks in Galaxy's Edge, a lot of cutbacks. There was going to be a third attraction, very similar to the People Mover, just a uh, trip around Galaxy's Edge on, so on the back of some creature. I don't know if it was a Bantha, I'm not really versed in Star Wars, but there was going to be a third ride and more live entertainment that were cut by Disney Parks. And this is a really sad thing that happened. Uh, obviously, I wish these things would have made it in and Bob Chapek or the Disney Parks cutting the budget had something to do with this. But the reality of the situation is that's not what ended up happening in Galaxy's Edge and we have to live with that. And there are other complaints like ones about how you can't find a lot of things from the original trilogy there, which is a lie, or because this land takes place in between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, you're not going to find a whole lot of original trilogy items in the land. Uh, just by looking around, you have to search for these things. So long story short, people basing Galaxy's Edge success off of the wait time for lines, I think is a disservice, not only to the land, but to Disneyland and Walt Disney World, Hollywood Studios as a whole. And there are other complaints about this land. Honestly, at the end of the day, it really just comes down to personal preference. If you like the way things are run in Galaxy's Edge, if you don't like the way things are run, that's totally fine if you don't like, you know, uh, cast members and being part of the world or things like that. If you don't enjoy that, that's just a personal preference and I don't blame you for disliking that. That's just who we are as people. We have different opinions and that's okay. I could go on about Galaxy's Edge all day, but I want to talk again now about... Now I could go talk about Galaxy's Edge all day 
Now I could go on about Galaxy's Edge all day. We're gonna shift focus here again towards the changing of the parks as a whole and why Disney fans don't like the idea of change. I'm going to try and explain where they're coming from and what I think change in the Disney parks means and why it's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, if you're unaware or you haven't watched my videos before and this is your first one viewing, hi, welcome to the channel. They're not all like this, I promise. I have made a chart in the past about the cycle of Disney fans hating a new attraction or land that's opening. This happened with Galaxy's Edge, this happened with Pandora, this happened with Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, it's gonna happen with Avengers Campus, it's already happening with Epcot. It happens every time Disney announces something, and I want to show it on screen here. Step one of the cycle is Disney announces a new ride or land is replacing an older ride or land, and then the Disney fans get upset saying that Disney's replacing the best part of the park and that they'll never visit again and that Disney is going down the d d and that Disney's going down the drain. Then the new ride or land opens and then Disney fans realize that this new addition to the land is way better than the old land or the old ride and they move on. Disney was right and then the cycle continues. And I gotta say it's getting a little old having to tell Disney fans that everything's gonna be okay. Walt didn't want the park to be a museum in the first place. There are some things that, of course, we would all be mad if they touched like Pirates or the Haunted Mansion or the castle, big things in the parks that are iconic, but there are things that aren't quite as big, like Big Thunder Ranch Barbecue. I don't really think we were losing a whole lot when that got replaced by Galaxy's Edge. Uh, the Tower of Terror is a very sensitive thing for a lot of people because a lot of people enjoyed the ride. I enjoyed the ride. But Guardians of the Galaxy is good, whether it's better than Tower of Terror or not, again, that's your opinion. But Mission Breakout was the first step in Avengers Campus, and I really think it was a good evolution of the Tower of Terror. And a lot of people are afraid of change when it comes to the Disney parks, and I understand. It's okay to be afraid of change. I'm nervous about what they're going to do to Spaceship Earth when they're going to bring that down for refurbishment for new Epcot, but I think we need to be more excited and we need to look forward to these changes rather than hating them without even experiencing them first. We don't know what this new Epcot's going to be. We don't know what Avengers Campus is going to be yet. We have to experience it first and then form judgments after visiting. And sort of the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today is the idea of being contrarian and why it's a bad thing. If you don't know, a contrarian is someone who looks at something new and something popular, something that's very well received, and in order to stand out from the crowd, in order to seem unique, they, they develop the opposing viewpoint to the popular majority. Uh, to make it a little easier, when Frozen came out, there were a lot of people saying that Frozen was a bad movie, that the hype was way overblown. And to say the hype was overblown, that's fair, but to say Frozen is a bad movie, that's not really the case. I mean, Birdemic is a bad movie, The Room is a bad movie, Frozen, the animation in the movie, the music in the movie, no matter how annoying you may think it is, those things are quintessential Disney. There's a reason it connected with so many people, there's a reason it was the highest grossing animated movie of all time until recently, it's because a lot of people loved it. If you hated it just because other people loved it, that makes you a contrarian, and it doesn't really give your argument that the movie is bad any ground. The same thing happens with the Disney parks a lot. It happened with Galaxy's Edge, it happened with Pandora, um, and I think people who hold these contrarian, uh, hating something just because it's popular really need to reevaluate why they're hating something, and think for themselves, I guess, is what I would say. I'm looking to break the cycle of people being afraid of change. You can be hesitant about it, and you can be worried about what this means for the Disney parks, but you need to experience it for yourself before forming an opinion. If you're afraid about Figment going away, that's okay. If you're hating something, you need to do your research. If you hate Epcot because they're adding all these intellectual properties in, you need to look back at the past of Epcot. It's always had intellectual properties. The past of Disney parks, they've always had intellectual properties. This isn't a new thing. So educate yourself before you start complaining about these things that may or may not be founded. So I'm sure you guys are gonna tell me whether or not I'm right or wrong in the comments down below, and I'm going to be active in these comments. I'm gonna be reading them and responding to them because I wanna have a discussion with people and I want to know why they like or dislike something. And we need to you know, come together and talk about these things rather than blindly hating or blindly loving things. I hate Haunted Mansion Holiday because it takes away from my favorite ride ever for a quarter of the year. That's, <laughs> I, I don't like it. 
I think that Disney needs to take absolutely everything that's even a little bit related to Star Wars out of Tomorrowland because there's an entire land dedicated to Star Wars now where those things can go. Star Tours and Hyperspace Mountain, those things don't belong in Tomorrowland now. That's kind of how I feel. This is kind of an announcement. I don't know if I can make it right now, but I'm going to anyways. I'm going to be on Freeform during the 31 nights of Halloween Fan Fest. I'm not sure what day. I will update you guys on the day and the time if you want to see me, but I will be there talking about the Haunted Mansion because it's the 50th anniversary. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the Haunted Mansion, answering some questions, doing an interview. So if you want to see me on primetime television, I will be on Freeform uh, during the 31 nights of Halloween Fan Fest. Uh, I'll, uh, like I said, I'll update you when I know when all of this is happening. So thank you guys all so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. Let me know why. Uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Like I said at the beginning, not all of the videos are like this. And everybody, thank you so much. I will see you all in the next video. Hopefully I didn't drone on too long in this one. I probably did. Goodbye.